Hello, everybody. Welcome again to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I know you will find inspiring, engaging, and interesting. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. All right. So life coaching, right? We've all heard about it. We've all seen it. Some of us may even know some life coaches, but not only do I know some, I have one with me today. You all, let me introduce you to my friend, Richard C. Johnson out of LA, who is the owner, CEO, and chief living officer, if you will, of Humanity Limited. Hi, hey, Rich, how are you? Yes, it's Humanity Unlimited. But Humanity I'm very, Unlimited, very, thank you. Yes, yes, because I believe that inherently there is unlimited potential in and around us. Oh, I love it, I love it. Now, you are in L.A., my friend, aren't you? Yes, I love it more than I think is appropriate. Um, <laughs> there's so many L.A. haters, but I love L.A. I that's, think they wrote a song, the song. something yes, like that. About more than a song. Yeah, that is so cool. Rich, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate you being here. I am so honored to be among your many wonderful interviewees i've been inspired by you for a while Aww, since we met me. actually which was 117 years ago exactly That's fortunately good. we have time machines so it hasn't really been that long it's just <laughs> been that long it's been like that long it's good to see you so Rich, tell me a little bit about your life coaching business not only about the <laughs> business itself but what got you started well um i have a history of inspiring people in my DNA. I'm fifth generation Pentecostal preacher's kid. I um, was a minister, a pastor for, for several, several years. And um, in transitioning to LA and into uh, a different elevated experience, I have decided I wanted to elevate my influence. And with, with this transition, I identified that I can do it in a very powerful way through coaching. And understanding the difference and distinction between coaching and counseling, I, I thought I was best suited not to go to 12 years of school to try and become a counselor, but that I had been through 40 years of life that I could use to coach. Wow, that is amazing. So how did you get started, though? Did you wake up one morning, you know, you had your coffee, some eggs, looked out the window and said, you know, today is my day to start coaching? Well, like uh, my mama, Adele, First Lady Johnson, tells me I have been coaching my entire life. Um, I've been inputting and inspiring people um, in however way I could. And each at incremental points in my life with the life experience I had. Now having plenty of life experience, I feel like I have a lot more to offer. And the way I started was, I believe it was in 2020, um, after studying the field and seeing what was out there, I decided, hey, I'm going to launch my practice. Um, I went and started training with John Maxwell. Um, I started following people like Lewis Howes and um, uh, Dean Grisario, Tony Robbins. And I decided that they are my peers and that I was going to be an excellent member of that community. I love what you said. You know, you, you started following these amazing folks and studying them. And instead of looking at them as, you know, a guru, if you will, and mentor to you, you said, I will look at them as my peers. Yeah. That, that's a huge leap from, I think I'm going to get started to, you know, my peers are these, you know, these folks. I, I think that's so awesome because so many of us, we look at people that we follow or people that we admire, but we never see ourselves as a peer of theirs. That is so important. One of the things I recently posted in my free inspiration outside of my coaching was that why waste time believing you're worthy of your dream when you can just believe in your dream? And I believe wow. that for far too long, I was seeking permission to be what I wanted to be when mm -hmm. life is your permission to be what you want to be. That's So just by the sheer virtue of being alive. Yeah. That's one of the things. My primary modality on my coaching is called life mining. Mm -hmm. And it's a double entendre. It's a whole part, whole concept that it starts with you identifying your life is mine. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> when you look at your life, 
Mm. You need to go back to your three-year-old self and be like, mine. <laughs> mine. <laughs> so and I selfish with your stuff. <laughs> well, what happens, is, is what I've observed with my clients who have all like inspired me with their responses and mm. they, they helped make me take myself more seriously by how effectively they experienced or applied the coaching and experienced change. Um, they, their change blew my mind, right. uh, oh, that's awesome. but one of the things I see consistently is that people are raised by well-intending parents mm -hmm. in a world that is, it's a world, it's a life that really belongs to your parents. You're not really living wow. your life when you're being raised. And mm -hmm. then, so when you get to be grown, <laughs> full <laughs> grown, you're, you're uh -huh. full grown when you're good and grown. Um, it's, there's, a, there's not a, a demarcation. There's not something that says, Hey, this is your life now. Right. And so, so many people are living by their parents' rules or by the rules of their younger self or mm -hmm. by concepts or even traumas that happened in their youth and haven't really calibrated to be like, wow, this is my life right. and I can have my rules for how mm -hmm. I'm going to live it. And that's, that's so part good. of what life mining does. It looks, it helps you look within you and around you for everything valuable that you need to live richly. Oh man, that is awesome. I like what you did there with the richly and your name is rich. Anyway, that's mm, just me. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's just a coincidence. And it, it seems a little bit like maybe more than a coincidence that maybe. my alma mater, uh, University of Texas, their mascots are? The miners. The miners. <laughs> I, I love made it for this. Yeah. <laughs> so then Rich, who are your clients? Well, the beautiful thing that I've discovered <laughs> just in the short time of me doing it is that many people can benefit from coaching, mm. but coaching is a luxury. And so I, I, my, I, my, Client base currently are people who are in their careers. They have success, but they also have a problem. Uh, um, one of the things is I, I jokingly refer to their successful butt. <laughs> <laughs> They're successful, but, yeah. you know, I, I have six figures, but yeah. I'm CEO, but. Mm -hmm. And if you have one of those successful butts, I'm here to coach your butt off. Wow. That's, <laughs> but, I love that so much. That is because how many of us, you know, are successful, have success, like you said, but we also have a closet full of stuff. We hope no one ever finds out. Yeah. I mean, because you can look like a baller and still be broken. Come I mean, on, you man. can be a baller. You can be a baller. You can mm -hmm. be on the top of your game in so many areas of your life and still have a brokenness that is not resolved because mm -hmm. you haven't been coached on that game, yeah. the game of life, the game of living your life. Yeah, that's so good. So Rich, let me ask you then, as a coach, who coaches the coach? It's sort of like who passes the pastor? Interesting is that the best practice for any coach is to have a coach. Mm -hmm. And I've invested in several. Mm -hmm. It has been an expensive <laughs> investment, <laughs> um, but I feel like I'm so worth it. Mm -hmm. um, I've, played, I've, I've invested thousands with other coaches because mm -hmm. I, can't, um, I can't say that it's that valuable if I don't treat it as that valuable. Yeah. So um, I've, I've invested to, to partner with people like Lewis House, um, right. Tom Bilyeu, Tony Robbins, and Dean Rosario. Right. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm invested in them. Oh, yeah. Not to mention John uh, Maxwell. Sure. I'm actually going to be certifying with him, awesome. I believe, in March. Okay. And um, so while certification is not a requirement for coaching, mm -hmm. I just value having the maximum influence, the, the highest quality, the most elevated coaching experience I can okay. provide is what I want to provide. Wow, that sounds amazing. Now, are your clients are only in the LA area or are you taking clients from everywhere? Actually, I don't have any clients in LA. 
They oh, are my. currently from all over. Okay. Um, some, are, some are in California, Northern California. Um, I have them as uh, far as, where is one of those? I believe one moved from Nashville to Texas. Mm -hmm. And these are some pretty inspiring people. Of course, I, I can't name who they are, Ooh. but just they're doing some big things. And to yeah. be able to contribute to their life as they contribute to the world is mm -hmm. such a great privilege. Man, that's awesome. Now, Rich, we're going to jump off topic just a bit only because it's me and it's my show. I can pretty much do what I want. So do you, know, you girl, do you, <laughs> you being in LA, tell me, are you a starving actor as well? <laughs> I, I chose it a long time ago. While I see myself as a performer, an artist that I would not be starving. I was not going to be a broke artist. So I, I work, I do different things. I also, in addition to coaching, I consult nonprofits and fundraising. I'm a grants manager. Um, but I recently got a um, commercial agent and I've been doing commercials and the, the commercial agent became full service. Okay. And so now I'm auditioning for movies and stuff. I've been on a little show. So you might have heard of it called Westworld. And I was Bigly. a background actor yeah, on HB, yeah. HBO's Westworld. I was it like, is, yeah. Wow. That was one of my First, I've done commercials for Walmart yeah. or a commercial for Walmart. I think I've seen and, one of uh, your commercials, actually. You yeah. know what? That was me modeling. Uh, when I oh, first got started, okay. I did um, uh, I'm, I did a modeling gig for Stock Photo. And mm. it's been used several times. People have been sending me where it's been used. It was actually used by the, uh, the Potter's House and T.D. Jakes. Okay when they were promoting one of their speaker's books, someone mm -hmm. called me and were like, you're on, you're on Bishop Jakes' thing. And it was just, just, just my face. Wow, that is awesome. Okay, look, you guys, there's so much stuff that we can talk to Rich about. And believe me, when this is over, there's so many things I'm still gonna ask him. But don't forget, all of his information will be in the description below. So you can reach out to him. And if you're looking for a life coach, you'll be able to find him. Don't forget also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up because we love hearing for you. Rich, my friend, before I let you go, <laughs> we get to play our game. So this game is pretty simple. It's called This or That. I'm just giving you the choice of two different things. And you, my friend, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I am ready. All right, let's do this. <laughs> All right, flowers or plants? Uh, can I say both? Yeah, of course you can. Uh, I love both. Okay. Hotel or tent? Hotel. Really? You're not an outside glamping kind of dude? <laughs> if, it's, if it's glamping and not camping, I love camping in like four or five store hotels. Yeah, I'm down with it. That's me. I tell people my idea of roughing it is no room service, but that's just me. <laughs> All right. Water park or amusement park? Amusement park. Mm. I don't want to be in all them liquids of everybody, all them juices. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in other people's juices is not my idea of a good time. I've got I the just ocean. Can't with you. I <laughs> wow. Practical joker or I don't play like that. I don't play like that. <laughs> no, me neither. Mm -mm. Candlelight. It's all fun and games light. until oh. you get your eye poked out. Right. It's all fun you know? and games until somebody puts it's you on just, Facebook. Until somebody okay. gets hurt. Yeah. If you got, people got cameras. Come on. We don't need to see that. that. I know. Somebody got candlelight no or moonlight? Hmm. How about candlelight under the moonlight? Well done, sir. Well <laughs> done. Planner or make it up as you go? Come on. Did you yeah. did you need to ask that one? I, it's not for me. These are for those I, watching. I have to say both because I do appreciate a good strategic plan. Mm -hmm. I love strategy, but I'm pretty comfortable winging it too. Okay, for those of you all who don't know, Rich will wing it any opportunity to <laughs> moving on, just so you know, okay? I go all day or I need a nap. Wow. Um, 
I have learned to appreciate a good nap. Uh, <laughs> I, I, and, I, and, I, and I value uh, regimens that require me to go to bed mm-hmm. earlier than I'm comfortable. So I have to say the power nap is my choice. Okay, I'm with that. Okay. In your speech, is it pecan or pecan? Mm. You know, I think I tend to say pecan. Mm. I'll be listening for it later. When you meet Mm -hmm. somebody, what do you notice first, their eyes or their smile? Um, I have a tendency to stare at people's mouths that I just recently identified with all the mask wearing. Ah, yeah. (laughs) And so um, I think I identify with their smiles and I have to train myself to look them eye to eye. Okay. I, I see that. Okay. Are you a words of affirmation guy or an acts of service guy? Both. Mm, I like it. Me too. And finally, my friend, what would you now tell your younger self? Oh, great question. Um, that you are more than you think you are. You can do more than you think you can do. Um, the value of your life experience is entirely and only limited by you. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. All right, everybody. I know you've enjoyed it because I have enjoyed it. But don't worry. There's more to come next week. I'm Ricky Smith, and I'll see you next time on Extra.